performance ninjas. I hope you had a fun time working on the software memory prefetching lab. Congratulations if you were able to achieve the required speed up. And if you just want to see the solution, continue watching this video. As always, the first thing that we do is we measure the baseline, right? And actually also let me show you one way how you can automatically compare your experiments against the baseline. The comparison itself I will show a little bit later when I will implement the change in the code. But the most important thing here is that we capture the baseline score into this baseline.json file. Let's quickly run the top-down analysis to make sure that we are fixing the most important problem first, not some secondary issue, right? And so we can see that our application is bound by memory, right? So that's good. Now, what we need to realize to solve this lab assignment is that our hash map is actually quite big. It has 32 million integers in it which almost certainly does not fit into the last level cache in your system. So here is the place where the most number of cache misses happen in our benchmark. So this is in this find method. And if we take a look at inside this find method, we can clearly see why that's the case, right? Well, it's because we load the random value from our large vector that has this 32 million integers in it but what we can also see is that we know all the lookup values in advance right and we need to leverage that and the idea that i will try to implement right now is quite simple i need to prefetch the lookup values for the subsequent iterations ahead of time and so first of all I need to add a new method to our hash map for prefetching memory locations. It is quite similar to the find method, but the only difference is that uh, instead of actually trying to find the element in the hash map, I prefetch its memory location. Now let's modify the kernel of the benchmark. And as we said, right, on every iteration, we need to prefetch the memory locations for the subsequent iterations. So this is the sketch of an idea and it will obviously not compile since we need to define what is I and what is look ahead. So let me do this. There is one last problem I need to fix here. Right now we are accessing uh, out of bounds of the lookups array which is a problem, right? So we essentially need to process the last 16 elements without any prefetching hints. So let me do this. So let's see if the benchmark validate. Uh, oops, I forgot the curly brace here. All right, let's validate it again. And ooh, I'm so lucky that it validates. Now let's uh, let's measure the modified version. Yes, yes, I remember. I promised you to show the automated way how you can compare your experiments against the baseline. And so here, in the similar fashion, I saved the score for the modified version into modified.json file, right? And now. I need to use uh, compare.python script, which is a part of the Google benchmark library. And now you can see that our runtime decreased by more than 54%, almost 55%, which is quite good. You can use this method in any other performance ninja lab. As a bonus exercise, try to play with this look ahead number and see which one gives you the best performance. One last thing, before you use explicit memory prefetching in your production code, remember the caveats that I made in the introductory video and remember to always measure. All right, ninjas, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this lab. 
and I see you next time. Take care.